If you missed race one, it was fairly action-packed because we saw a race league battle between Ian Jones and Matthew Parks. We saw a bit of an intermittent safety car for a lap as well. And then it was a race where almost no one wanted to be third. There was one point where we had a great battle going on between both Oliver Faller and Ben Huntley, but then miraculously, despite even the fact, even the fact there was no contact between the pair of them, both cars spun off in, in synchronicity up at the first part of Sunny In and Sunny Out. Huntley's car clashed the barriers. Faller's car managed to keep it off the wall and managed to get back home in roughly around 17th or 18th place. But all sorts was going on as well. We had Paul Maguire spinning off as well. Uh, ben Huntley's going to start towards the back of the grid as well as, as, as well as some other top drivers in the mix as well. But it was left to Ian Jones who picked up the victory, the, f the first of the weekend for Ian, with Matthew Parks getting back on form. He said he'd had some engine troubles throughout the first part of the season. Good to get him back on the podium with second place. And Wayne Flint was the almost slightly surprised driver to be in third place. He was having such a great battle with the guys around like Oliver Faller and also uh, Ben Huntley, but found himself on the final step of the podium. Uh, Tom Griffiths was fourth, and then Tom David Sharp picking up fifth position with Gordon McMillan, Mark Skeets, David May, Mikey Doble, Keith Towers, and Mike Doble, or Doble Senior, running at the top uh, 11 finishers. So we'll see the cars heading out onto the grid, and we know this time that they'll be doing green flag lap straight out of Park Ferme. So we got caught a little bit off guard earlier on with the cars coming onto the grid, and we were expecting them to go onto a green flag lap, but then when they started to charge off the line, we realised it's a little bit more than that. So a little bit of clear-up going on. Again, another chance to praise our fantastic marshals for and volunteers for doing some great work in what is increasingly hot conditions. Uh, weather conditions, as far as I can see on my... Uh, uh, weather information I have. Still 17 degrees out there. It should be a high of about 18. It should feel a little bit warm feel a little bit warmer than that. A little bit humid out there and there was a bit of a breeze around as well, which means it should be a little bit cooler than it has been before. But even so the clouds are starting to dissipate a bit more and it is starting to get even more glorious out there here at Croft. It's a beautiful afternoon. Hopefully the weather will continue across to tomorrow's action. So you can see the Nankang Tires BMW Con Cup Cup cars positioned eager to get back out onto the circuit. A couple of cars patched up after a little bit of a, uh, a rough and ready first race, but these cars are tough. They'll be able to get back out on track. And as we said, it was a, a brilliant battle uh, at the front between Matthew Parks and Ian Jones. And Matthew Parks had the lead, but then lost it on the restart, thanks to Ian Jones, after getting a good, a good run on him so far. I'm sure Matthew would have appreciated getting a victory, but second place, he said he was very happy with that because of the troubles he'd had earlier on. And Tom Griffiths won't have been too disheartened with what was a third place, if I'm correct. If I get, let me get my uh, grid back open once again. Uh, so, no, it's fourth place, my apologies, because Wayne Flint got third. Tom Griffiths fourth. What that will have done is uh, got him uh, closed the gap in on the points on the, of the Compact Cup because, of course, uh, the points back the table was led coming to the weekend by Stephen Daly. Then, a rather unexpected error from Stephen Daly, we think, uh, wasn't sure if there's any contact with anyone, but it looked possibly, he looked as though he was quite despondent with himself. So it would suggest possibly that on the run into the S's, there's a couple of tyre stacks there. The tyre stack was in, almost in the middle of the road after the incident. So we suggest that possibly he's clipped the tyre stack and that's damaged the left front and put him off the road. So that's very reminiscent, ironically, of what happened last year with TCR UK when we had Dan Lloyd, who was chasing after the leaders and then went off the road and did exactly the same thing, clipped the tyre stack, damaged the front left suspension, and he was off the road and out of the race. And that sort of brought the title battle right down to the final rounds last year at Donington Park. So a little bit of different circumstances for Stephen Daly, of course. He, again, leads the championship, but he's still got a few more rounds to go. And he does get to drop his three worst scores. So that, that's his first retirement of the season because up until that point, he hadn't really finished any lower than round about third place, really. He picked up, from what I can see, uh, what looks to be about f three or four race victories. He picked up two at Sneston. He picked up one at Browns Hatch. And also one looks to be at Alton Park as well. So, uh, And apart from that, he had a second place at Sneston and a third at Browns Hatch. So and a third at Alton Park. So he's been up until the first race earlier on this afternoon, he'd been pretty much had a great result and hadn't been off the podium all season. So he needs to have a great start here if he's back out for this race, but he will do it from 32nd on the grid. But any, you can't give a good driver down, so if that car's got back up to full strength, he will certainly waste no time tearing his way through the field. Of course, when you've got sort of 31, in his case, mobile chicanes to try and get through. That's no disrespect to any of the drivers. It's simply just him as being one of the fastest drivers in the field. When he's trying to pick his way through, trying to get through the traffic in the early couple of laps, and we know it's a grid that's busy, that's fast, that's dynamic, that's got all sorts going on around them, that's going to be a real challenge for him to try and pick his way up through the order. 
So we may as well just waiting for the cars to be released out of part firm. I think once we've done that, we'll start to give you the grid once they head onto the uh, circuit round to the, to the start of race number two for the Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup. We've still got some more action coming up uh, in with a few more races coming up. Two more races after this. We've got the first race of the weekend for the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. And then we've got the first race for the Disc Lock Civic Cup, and that ends our live stream for today. It'll then be Andy McEwen for uh, pretty much all the races tomorrow. I'll be jumping just for helping for a couple, but it'll mostly be Andy McEwen taking control of the microphone, and he will take you through all the action for the TCR UK Championship, for the Avon Tires National Formula Fords, and also for the rest of the Super Cup races, as well as the Afro Mayos and Porsches, the Volkswagen Racing Cup, and the Civic Cup as well, and all the way through to the rest of the day until the end of the weekend, with the last race being the Toyota Tires Porsche Championship on their own, which will be the last race of the day tomorrow. So just remember, if you are watching either on Facebook or on YouTube, you'll be able to go ahead and uh, give us your comments. I've got the comment feeds on the Alpha live streams here. So uh, again, just from a few people who had Chris White watching, other one, Nile Johnson, uh, Phil Bolland as well. Dave Goddard still watching. Hi to Dave. Uh, of course, he's a commentator extraordinaire as well. And uh, some others watching on. There's a rare weekend off for Dave, so he's actually enjoying some club motorsport online rather than being at a race circuit this time. So uh, good to get a chance to uh, have a weekend off. There's no weekend off for the Compact Cup as we see cars heading out, on th out of the assembly area onto the circuit. So let's give you the rundown for the grid for the second race of the day for the 2019 Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. And it will be, as a virtue of his race one victory, Ian Jones, who will start on pole position on the front row of the grid. Alongside him will be number 38, Matthew Parks. Row two is number 55, Wayne Flint. Alongside him, Tom Griffiths in car number 16. Row three is number 40, David Sharp. And number 10, Gordon McMillan. Row four is... Uh, Number 42, Mark Skeets, who leads the way in the Masters standings. Alongside him is the defending Masters champion, Mike uh, David May. Then it's Mikey Doval, or Doval Jr., as he's known by some people. He will start in ninth on the grid. Alongside him is Keith Towers in the number 66. Then row at six is 65, Mike Doval, or Mike Doval Sr. Alongside him is Keith Tower, um, Dave Matt Flowers in the number three. Row seven is the triple six of Rick Reese Clayton, number 20 of Rudy McMillan. Silver car there you see coming to shot. Uh, he is the son of Gordon McMillan. Row eight is number four, Rain McDowell, and number 35, John King. Then it's Oliver Fowler. Watch for him because he's starting in fourth place on the grid for race one. He will try and make his way back up from 18th on the grid. Look for him in the number 18 car. 18 car in 18th place. Fits pretty well. Then we've got from him... Uh, so 17 on the grid. He starts alongside number 15, Jim Barrett. Row 10 is number 81, Richard Sutherland. At number 22, Nick Edmund. Aaron Morgan, who had a, was one of the cars that had a bit of a spin or a bit of a moment throughout race one, right here at the entry to Sunny In and Sunny Out, uh, is number 7, Aaron Morgan. Alongside him will be number 29, Philip Adcock. Row 12 is number 9, Martin Gadsby. And number 91, Craig Arkell. Row 13 is number 888, John Attard. And number 76, Simon Welch. James Stanbury, who had a bit of incident in the uh, first race, a bit of damage, will start back in 27th place on the grid alongside Paul Maguire, who was up in the top 10 for the first race, but had a spin up at, uh, again on the run to uh, the complex of Sunny In and Sunny Out. Then it will be uh, Ben Huntley in car number 96 alongside ben, uh, Brendan Murphy. Ben Huntley's race, of course, ended in the barriers up at the exit of Sunny In. Then Thomas Middleton and Stephen Daly, who I think is on the go. Just seeing his car flash in the back of the shot. There he is, hopefully coming through very shortly. You'll see him in a minute. And he starts on 32nd on the grid alongside Thomas Middleton. And then Thomas Langford starts at the back of the grid, 33rd and last. And the rest of the field comes through. And 45 has gone through. And I, ha I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I can't see Stephen Daly, actually. So that looks to be possible. We've lost a couple of cars. And quite crucially, if that's the case, no Stephen Daly. Unless he's starting for the pit lane, that is a real shame, which means that that is going to be even more points taken away from Stephen today. So a nightmare visit to Croft for the championship leader. And this means now that the likes of Ian Jones, Matthew Parks, Wayne Flint, you know, Thomas Griffiths, Ben Huntley, all these guys towards the front who are in the fight for the championship, they've got a chance to really take some crucial points away from Stephen Daly. This will be another drop score for him. You'll have to count this this weekend. There's pretty much at, there's two of his three drop scores. And from there on in, every single result for Stephen will have to count. It will have to be as good as it possibly can be. He needs as, as perfect a season for the rest of the year as he needs. I don't want to put the pressure on, but... 
that's the, what he will feel. He'll have to basically make sure that he is as error-free as possible for the end of the season. Uh, there is a very similar-looking car lining up towards the back of the field, but that's not him. Just behind uh, Aaron Morgan, that is John Attard. So there's a couple of similar-looking cars. Uh, but um, Reese Clayton's one of them, and John Attard is the second. But Stephen Day's 64 car, not on the grid, sadly. So this race will get on without him as the green flag waves at the back. And race two of the day for the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup is set to go. Jones and Parks on the sprint down towards turn one. Who's going to win the whole shot? Waiting for the revs to come up. And the race will be underway very shortly. Matthew Parks shuts the door finally. Waits for the signal for the red lights to come up. The revs rise. And race two, his Compact Cup is go. Good start from Mark Skeets back on the fifth row of the grid. Trying to squeeze between David May and possibly the eight, one of the cars in the mid-pack in fifth or sixth position. But it's Matthew Parks on the outside of the front row who will get the whole shot into Clairvaux for the first time. And it will be Parks that leads. Jones in second place, Flint in third. Tom Griffiths goes to the outside of David Sharp. It's a cracking getaway from fifth on the grid. Up one place to fourth. Tom Griffiths is down to fifth position. Gorm McMillan was the car that was trying to, on the other side of... Mark Skeets to come down the back straight for the first time. And it's just bits of debris all over the place from the previous race, but 15 minutes of racing here for the Compact Cup. Look at them. About 30 Compact Cup cars pouring down towards Tower. It's a fantastic sight as they head down the straight. And there you see John Attard's car. Similar colour to Stephen Day's, but not in the race, sadly, is the championship leader. So they'll head out now out of Tower Corner and down towards the... Uh, complex at the Jim Clark S's. You can see Wayne Flint's already in this early stages of the opening lap. He's trying to go with the top two. So the main battle lines appear to be drawn at this point between Matthew Parks and Ian Jones. Back into the complex of Sunny in and Sunny out for the first time. Sharp in fourth. Griffiths fifth. May sixth has got a good start ahead of uh, um, Mark Skeets. I think Keith Towers is in there as well. Keith Towers is about tenth or so. There's some battling going on in the mid-pack as they head up towards the complex for the first time. And it is five alive for the podium as they have into there, Mark Skeets with a lock-up ahead of it looks like Keith Towers. Also one of the Dobles in there as well. Reese Clayton locking up in the triple six. One of the KC Motorsport entered cars. And there's the confirmation as we say, no Stephen Daly in this race. There is John Attar, but it's a very similar looking car, but that's not Stephen Daly at the world. No, there he is. Sorry, as far as just know, thought it was. But that's actually um, Gordon McMillan. A bit looking very similar looking car. So Gordon McMillan's had a bit of, bit of strife after starting in the top ten. But down the pit straight to end the first lap. Parks leads the way. Jones in second place, Flint in third, back into Clairvaux they go once again, over the kerbs, top three breaking away now, David Sharp heads the next group, and up in there with a good start in car number 93, that is David May, so he's in one of, he's a, a slightly different looking car, because he's had a, good, a good, well one car's gone on wide there, he had a sort of a, a BMW sort of current works BMW liveried car with a slightly sort of angled sort of M coloured car, but he looks to have made some um, change in the front bumper and the bonnet as well, so it means that that colour scheme has kind of faded away a bit. It's still showing a little bit towards the back of the car, but even so, looks like there was a bit of an error there just briefly for the 81, and that was towards the back of the field. Possibly Craig Arkle, maybe, in the 91. No, Richard Sutherland was the car that was a little bit uh, straight lining at the chicane. Meanwhile, back with the leaders, and uh, Ian Jones is starting to put the pressure on already. The top two are breaking away pretty quickly from third place man Wayne Fleet, and so these two appear to be the class of the field so far today but in the, the BMW Compact Cup out through the right hander out of Sunny out Flint in third still Griffiths in fourth position May in fifth place Skeets in sixth but being put under pressure now from Keith Towers in eighth and it's Dob Mikey Doble in ninth place and then it's the number three of Matt Flowers rounding out the top ten and Rudy McMillan's had a good start. He was around about roughly the 7th or 8th row of the grid, but he's now jumped up to what is now 11th place. And Rudy started back in 14th place on the grid. So up three spots for Rudy. Good stuff. So he's upholding the family honour as uh, Go Father Gordon tries to make up some spots. Fastest lap of the race for Matthew Parks on the first proper flying lap around this time. So 141.673 to Matthew Parks. Lead gap is just under 6 tenths per second as the top two turn right all the way through Holthorn's corner. And up now through the chicane for the third time. There's Flint in third, being put under pressure from Tom Griffiths. Picked up his first race victory in the championship last year at Thruxton after a great battle with Stephen Daly. And it's good to see him making further progress. Was up there in the top three of the championship behind Matthew Parks. He currently sits second in the points. 
but I'm sure with the two results he's picked up at the expense of Stephen Daly's retirement in race one and non-start in race two it'll benefit him what won't benefit Matthew Parks is running wide on the exit of Tower Corner and he starts to feel the pressure of Ian Jones now that's exactly what happened on the restart of race one he only took a small mistake or a bit of a pace advantage for Ian Jones to hold on as the cars make their way up towards the complex at sunny in and sunny out and we wait for them to come into view here and let's see if it's still going to be Parks or Jones in front and Parks remains in the lead so he's managed to hold off the advance of Ian Jones for the time being change for third place in the background Tom Griffiths is past Wayne Fleet Wayne Flint and now in front of him or in, in, in front of him is now Tom Griffiths with David May chasing him down in fifth position Mark Skeets in sixth followed by Towers, Doble, Flowers and now that's Oliver Fowler I think into 10th position now he started back in what was 17th so Oliver Fowler's not hanging around up into the top 10 already at the conclusion of lap 3 and he may not catch the top 2 but he's got a, he's the, the rest of the pack for third place downwards are certainly within touching distance to start to make some progress he's managed to pick up a few more, quite a few spots I think his next target is possibly going to be Mikey Doble in ninth place up the inside now for fourth place goes David May so Wayne Flint down another place and this now could see Wayne possibly losing at another spot if he's not careful there's a little contact Skeets tags the right rear Wayne Flint's is there a problem now for Wayne Flint's car he pulls to the inside line also the Keith Towers has gone off the road and yeah Wayne Flint's pulling off sadly so I'm afraid Wayne Flint's cut race is done, I'm afraid, after just barely six minutes. So that's a shame for Wayne Flint after having such a good result in race one. His race will go no further as he brings the BMW to a halt on the back straight on the run towards Tama Corner. The 55 car out of the race. Back with the race leaders. Still, Parks ahead of Jones. Nose the tail on the sprint back towards Sunny and then Sunny out. And now as we wait for them to come back into shot, as we see the leaders continuing on. Griffiths now has a bit of clear track in third place. Still, Ian Jones not able to find a way past Parks at this point in time. Griffiths has got a pretty comfortable place, position in third place now. David May, let's see if he can close after him. Keith Towers holding on in fifth place. Skeets is up to sixth. And there, in the black and yellow car, that's Oliver Fowler. And he's already up now to seventh position. So he's got past... Looks like Mikey Devils had some problems. He's actually coming to threat now, it looks like, from the 81... And that was the car that went off earlier on, and that was of Richard Sutherland. So it looks like that. Uh, so that was Mike Doble, actually. I think we've lost Mikey Doble somewhere. So Mikey Doble was as high as eighth place. Then he's hiding in the pack. Ah, oh, there he is, just behind Oliver Fowler. He was so tucked in behind Oliver Fowler, he was almost out of shot. So we managed to get him back into view now, and he's just behind Oliver Fowler now. He's up into seventh place. Now he's up to seventh just by half distance, given the fact that the podium places aren't too far away he could be easy getting up as high as fourth if he carries his progress but he needs to clear Mark Skeets and then Keith Towers and you see that's a stoppage for Jim Barrett on the 15 car that car's pulled off it looks though on, on the runoff area on the outside of Sunny Inn by the looks of it there's Tom Griffiths in third place now Oliver Fowler is on the back end of Mark Skeets now but if he wants to get himself a possible podium place he has to catch up Tom Griffiths but that means catching up to Mark Skeets and then Keith Towers and then David May, then passing all three of them and then closing up onto the back of Tom Griffiths. And the gap between third and fourth was 2.9 seconds at the last time by. So he's got to pass three cars and then make up three seconds in seven minutes. That's a tall order. But looking at his lap times, Oliver Fowler's last lap was a 142.695. And he is effectively, by one thousandth of a second, the fourth master's fan out there on track. He's actually quit lapping quicker substantially than the three cars in front of him so it's a good opportunity there this is James Stanbury in the number 79 car just uh, trying to get back around again after some problems in the first race that's him towards the back of the field still Matthew Parks leads the way from Jones in second Griffiths third May 4th and then it's Towers Skeets Faller Mikey Dale still in eighth place and then it's Flowers and McDowell back with our race leaders down the pit straight the gap is now between the top two as they come across the line seven tenths of a second but a new fastest lap of the race goes to Ian Jones 141.492 but the lap times were fairly similar in fact actually look at the lap time it showed me that Matthew Park's lap was about half a tenth quicker but for some reason it's not been counted the fastest lap of the race which is quite odd so because the last lap for Ian Jones was a 141.492 but Matthew Parks has just, has just done a 141.444 but it's showing Jones is the fastest lap of the race. We'll see if that works out with time three in the second rather than dwell on that. 
There's Tom Griffiths in third position, pulling away from David May. Now then, looking at uh, Oliver Faller, he's past Mark Skeets. Next target is going to be the red and white car of Keith Towers. Mike Derbel's in there as well. Then Ray McDowell. The five of Paul Maguire is doing pretty well from towards the back of the grid. And up the inside of Towers into what is now fifth position goes Oliver Faller. So he's driving it to the front now. Towers will try and fight back on the exit, but it looks as though Fallon's got the momentum. Now the next target for Oliver Fallon with some clear track is going to be David May in fourth position. Of course, as we know, catching is one thing, but passing is quite another. And the scrap behind him is looking pretty tasty because Keith Towers is under threat from Mark Skeets, who in turn is under threat from Mikey Doble. Oh, Oliver Fallon's off the road, sliding wide on the exit. I spoke too soon. Oliver Faller for the second error in as many races up at Sunny Inn and he, all the hard work getting past those three or four cars has come to nothing because he's lost out to Towers, Skeets, as well as Mikey Doble and also as well, he's lost out to Ray McDowell. He did lose out to Paul Maguire briefly but goes straight back up the inside into the complex. That is a classic commentator's curse, isn't it? Gets the move done, all of a sudden he goes off the road, doesn't he? As they come across the line, Ian Jones with another new fastest lap of the race. And what a fastest lap it is. 1 minute 40.970. And the lap last time for Matthew Parks was pretty rapid as well. Of 141.127. So the track is getting faster as the afternoon goes on. A 140.970. The only man in the 140 so far. Off the road is the 22. And that is Nick Edmund is off the road. So Nick Edmund is back on the road after. Looks to be a brief excursion onto the grass. And we see now a scrap that's developing here between the 45 and the 29. That's 45 Brendan Murphy battling with the 29 of Philip Adcock. As we see the leaders again, exiting Tower Bend. Just Matthew Parks using all the road and a little bit more, as much as he can get away with. As they come back into the Jim Clark S again. Very high speed S's section. Left and then right. And then the sprint in towards Barcroft. And... James with a tighter run through the right-handed kink and he's starting to get on the prowl here, forcing a mistake from Parks, takes a look up the inside, but again, just putting two wheels onto the grass, bounding over the kerb, and you can see how determined that Ian Jones wants to make this a double victory, but Matthew Parks is pulling out every single trick in the book and pulling out all the stops to try and make sure that he keeps Ian Jones at bay. Tom Griffiths looks pretty comfortable in third place for the time being. His gap over David Mays, four seconds. And he's about seven seconds away from this lead battle as Jones tries to look back up the inside again, but Parks sweeps to the inside line and can't get the job done. A look for the exit. Tired to what tired to run. I think he was dangerous. He's almost looking to go around the outside on the exit, but realized that if he did that, he'd be forced onto the grass with three minutes to go now. So they're gonna get two more laps, I reckon. Cross the line, and that's Nick Edmund again. And this time he's off into the into the wheat fields up at the, the tower corner. So some skill for reversing from uh, Nick Edmund. And he'll get that onto the, onto the road pretty quickly. So, some yellow flags down at Tower Corner, but he should get it going pretty quickly. They should be clear by the time these two get down to it, because I'm sure that if Ian Jones can get a good run here through the S's onto the back straight and stay in the slipstream of the bit of the leader, Matthew Parks, you might get a shot to make a move into Tower Corner. He's closing. They're quite boxy shape of these BMW Compact Cup cars, so they can punch quite a big hole in the air. So the slipstream is pretty effective, and they head into the right-hander with Ian Jones forcing Buck to go defensive. Parks really stopped the car on the apex on the run through the exit of Tower Bend. That might have hurt him because on the run towards the Jim Clark S's, they're going to be side by side into the left-hander. They go at the first part of the S's. Matthew Parks refines his momentum and holds on to the place. So Matthew Parks really did stop the car on the apex there, but he's managed to get the car back going again. Whether that was a bit of a miss shift, I think it was possibly the best possible place you could have a miss shift, thankfully. Without possibly at a high-speed corner that could have been even worse. So out through Sunny Out now on the penultimate lap of this second race of the day for the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup and still the battle rages. There in the background in third place is Tom Griffiths. He is on his own in third place. And no challenge behind. David May is fourth. Keith Towers is fifth. Mark Skeets holds on to sixth position. Seventh place is now Mikey Doble. Eighth place is McDowell. Still in ninth place is Oliver Fallas. So after his mistake, he hasn't really made any more progress up the field. As up over the kerb goes Ian Jones on the inside. One more time around with one minute 20 seconds or so on the clock. Back down the order, we see a battle going on here. This is Brendan Murphy battling with a 29 of, looks like, Philip Adcock. Also in there, too, is a couple more. Some more brake lock as they go through. Now, here's the scrap that's going on for four plates downwards. So, Keith Towers is coming under threat from Mark Skeets in the yellow and black car. That's Ray McDowell. Another spin for the 91. That is Arkell. So, Arkell's had a bit of a spin up there. And 
So Philip Arkell has had a Craig Arkell, sorry, and he was running around in a possibly about 15 or 20 20th place. Meanwhile, the leaders, X to the S's, now sees Ian Jones possibly lining up for his best chance of the race so far. On the last lap of the race, into Tavern. A big lock up from Matthew Parks to hold on to the lead. But he somehow gets the car stopped, but has it killed his momentum on the exit of the corner. The answer is not too much. And now they go side by side, exiting Tower Corner. This is for the race lead on the last lap of the race. Side by side into the Jim Clark S's. Ian Jones stays on his door on the inside line. Trust goes nose in front. There's almost a bit of contact. Parks is over the over the, the runoff area. Into Barcroft they go. And Jones has done it. He's got through. Jones straight away to the inside line into Sunny. Has he gone too deep? Will Parks get him back on the exit on the cutback? But no. Jones parks the car on the apex on the exit of the corner and stays in front. Parks slides wide on the exit of Sunny out. And with just a few corners to go, that was a pretty daring pass for Ian Jones. So he times it just to absolute perfection at the fastest part of the course. And into the complex for the final time. Is this the great escape for Ian Jones? Has he just pulled off a fantastic last lap pass to hold on to the lead? There's still one more corner to go. It's not over yet. Parks will try everything he can to lock up for Ian Jones this time. Has he gone too deep on the exit? The answer is I don't think so. Parks is wide on the exit. He'll try and sprint to a line, but it may be too late. And, and the run's the checker flag. Ian Jones will make it a double here at Croft as he heads the checker flag, and he wins race two, but only just from Matthew Parks. The gap at the end across the line between the pair of them was 0.239 of a second. What a great last lap battle, and what a pass through the Jim Clark S's into Barcroft to get that lead. Fantastic move. Tom Griffiths will pick up third place in the final step on the podium. Fourth place will go to David May. See here, this is John King with a, his exhaust hanging off the back of the car. He's battling with the 81. That's a Richard Sutherland and the 7 of Aaron Morgan. He's the driver with the uh, adapted uh, hand controls on the car. Good to see that uh, Aaron's had a good finish. But there are your top three waving to the crowd and also waving to the marshals. Marshals giving them a round of applause. And the drivers, as ever, showing appreciation for the hard work of the Orange Army as the cars make their way back around towards Park Ferme. Another breathless race. Wasn't as, wasn't as frenetic as race one, but certainly had its talking points. But the main thing is, of course, also, no Stephen Daly. He loses more crucial championship points. This is a weekend that I'm sure he would rather forget. So here is the result of race two of the weekend for the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. Ian Jones picks up the win on the last lap with a brilliant pass to get ahead of Matthew Parks. Jones wins with Parks second. Griffiths picks up a final podium place in third. David May comes home fourth as the top Masters driver from Keith Dowers, Towers and, Ryan, and Ray McDowell. Then it's Mikey Doble from Oliver Fowler with Paul Maguire and Mark Skeets who drop down to the bottom of the top ten in the last few laps and he finishes off in tenth. 11th place goes to Reese Clayden from 12th place man Matt Flowers. 13th place goes to Mike Doble from John King in 14th place ahead of Richard Sutherland and Aaron Morgan. The 164 of Middleton comes home in 17th place. 164 being Thomas Middleton. Good run for him from what was 31st on the grid to 17th. The 45 of Brendan Murphy comes home in 18th place with Philip Adcock and Martin Gadsby. Then it's the 76 of Simon Welch followed by the 8, the triple eight of John Attard. And then we have Craig Arkell, who had that spin earlier on. Uh, Rudy McMillan, who dropped down the order. He was as high as about 10th at one point, but has dropped back down to 24th place. Nick Edmund had a couple of spins and is and a visit into the uh, the wheat fields at the top of Tower Bend. And then we had some stoppages on track for Gordon McMillan. We lost James Stanbury, who came into the, into the pits. We lost Wayne Flint after being as high as around 3rd or 4th position. And also we lost the 15 of Barrett and the 40 of Sharp after he retired on lap 3. So that's it for the BMW Compact Cup. Hope you enjoyed that. It was fantastic racing. They'll be at next time for three races at Anglesey. So they'll be sure to stay tuned for them. And in the pit lane with our top three, as ever, once again, is Bryn Lucas. We're here with the race winner. Ian's just having a chat with Matt Parks there. That was a heck of an end to a race. So, well done, Ian. I mean, that was fraught, but you got there in the end. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to happen. Um, yeah, I thought Matt had it. He was quicker than me on this end of track, and I was quicker up there. He made a slight mistake. Um, yeah, what a bloody good race. It was indeed. It was actually a half a second gap you had. Uh, behind 
with about a lap to go. And yeah. it was a lock-up from Matt that enabled you to get in, but you had to push him the whole way. You forced him into it, really. Yeah, um, it's what racing's about. Um, I've got to thank Andy Waters from AW Track Sport for preparing the car, Black Dog Carpentry, um, and uh, tried and tested tools who might be on board shortly. So, yeah. Lovely, well, fingers crossed. Now, that's not a bad day's work for you. It's perfect, isn't it? Pole two wins, what more can you want? The sun's shining. It'd just be nice if it's closer to home. <laughs> no comment on that one. Congratulations, well done. Thank you very much. So there's our race winner there. What a race that was. Just trying to find out. Oh, our second place is just being interviewed right now by the circuit commentator. But what an end to that race. Thought it was done and dusted, but well, it didn't quite go to plan there for Matt. Matt's having an interview right now. Let's see if we can find our third place driver. Let's go down here if we can and find Tom. If we have a quick word with Tom, then uh, we'll come into second in a second. Tom, that was for you um, fairly easy work? Yeah, pretty lonely, to be honest. I had no one around me for probably the last five, six laps. As lonely as you'll ever get in a compact cup race, I think. Yeah, well, we've seen some pretty close racing out there. And it, we've said it a few times so far today, that when it comes to racing and you are on your own, that is really when you can drop the ball. Yeah, it's easy to lose your concentration. There's a few times where sort of looking at these guys going at each other up front, it's, it's quite easy to lose your concentration, but just about managed to hold on to it with the gap I had behind. Now, I don't know if you could see what was going on ahead. I'm not sure how far ahead they were in terms of uh, what you could see, but were you just praying that they were going to go into each other, take each other out there? You don't hope to win them that way, but I was fortunate at Sneston with a, a similar incident, and it's in the back of your mind all the way around. But no, it was, they were in a league of their own today. It was good to watch. You say you don't hope, but you do a little bit. We know, we know. But well done there, third place. Let's go down here and grab our second place driver then. Uh, so, Matt... Looked like he got the race win, it has to be said, but that final, final lap had so much drama. It was close. Frustrated? Um, more, I enjoyed that more than the first, to be honest. Yeah, it's always nice to take a win away, um, but we've bounced back, like I said previously, from a, a bad start of the season. Um, but the race, again, we want to put on a bit of a show when uh, the last couple of laps, when he, I knew he was going to get me coming out of the tower at some point. So going up around the back, down into to, to Sunny's, we were two by two right through there. I thought this is going to look great on camera and great for the spectators. So, yeah, it was great. Was it the lock-up, do you think, that gave him the advantage? Yeah, definitely. It's a mistake. As soon as you make a mistake, mistake in one of these things, you're on the back foot straight away. And, you know, and he's, not only that, Ian's super, super quick coming out of Tower. So put the two together and you're, on, a, you're on, the back, on the back foot. It was a great race to watch and really nice to have the drama at the end. Maybe not for you, but it certainly was as a spectator. Yeah, that was great. Fantastic. Loved it. Brilliant, well done there. So the top three, what a race that was. We've seen two brilliant races in the BMW Compact Cup and as always they bring the drama. Stay tuned because more races are coming up here live from Croft.